Hey guys, it is Elizabeth House and with House and History. And on today's teaching tidbits, I'm gonna talk about that first day of school seating chart. You don't know the students, you have not met them. Seating charts are so important in creating that classroom expectation. What do you do for the first day of school? So I'm gonna tell you how I do mine and hopefully it helps. Obviously, everybody's classroom is set up different. So I'm just kind of giving you an overview of how when I'm looking at students and looking at where to seat them, what I do and thinking about how to do my grouping. So in starting that seating chart, I'm going to look at two things first. I'm going to start with any paperwork the student has on any needs. And then the second thing, looking at that along with their reading scores. So kind of comparing those two things. So talking about that first thing I look at with that paperwork. We have students that come in with different paperwork, whether it is IEPs, it is 504s, it is RTIs, response to intervention plans, it is our ELL students. Um, if it's the behavioral plan for them, anything like that. I'm going to go through all of that paperwork first. And I create a chart based upon that paperwork of all the different accommodations that a student might need to be successful. In that paperwork, the very first thing I'm looking for is going to be anything with visual or hearing needs. I have had students that it is very specifically stated they need to be sitting on the right side because of their hearing needs. Uh, visual needs, I've had students that need to be up closer. So I am gonna start with that. Once I have those students seated that have any hearing or visual needs, then I actually go in and look at pictures of students if they are available. I wanna make sure that everybody is comfortable in our classroom. And so as I'm looking at pictures, I look at students that might be taller, might need a little bit more room to stretch out. And I look at that and I compare it with with their reading scores. If on their reading scores they're ranking really high in reading, which you go, Miss Housen, you teach social studies, you're a house in history. We are very much tied to reading. So if they are ranking higher in their reading, then I'm gonna look at my groupings that are further in the back so they can be comfortable, they can stretch out a little bit, they can sit taller, they don't have to worry about slouching down so people can see and I'm gonna seat them in the back. If their re reading is ranking not quite so high, then I'm gonna look at the sides of my classroom to put them, I want to make sure everybody sitting in my room, coming into my room, is comfortable being in my room and the seat that I'm asking them to sit in. Now, going to those reading scores, along with still looking at any paperwork, is I look at my reading scores and I divide it really into kind of groups of three. Group one is gonna be my higher level, maybe kids that in their reading scores um, earned between a 100 to about an 85. Group two is about mm, 85 to 75. Group three would be 75 to 60. And group four is gonna be anything below that. Looking at those scores and those groupings, along with my paperwork, I look at, okay, if you're in the top, where can I put you? I'm probably gonna put them further back. They still need me to check in on them. They still need me to help them, but they're not gonna need as much hands-on help. Now, with that, I'm gonna put students that are group one and group two together. I might also look at some of my group threes who are higher within the group three to put them together. I do not wanna put a group one, somebody really high, with a group four right off the bat and not really knowing their needs, okay? Because I still wanna push my group ones to be successful and to work really hard and try to achieve more, okay? So in the back, my further tables that are further away, I'm gonna put a lot of my group ones and my group twos. Kinda coming into that middle range, it'll be more my group twos, group threes, and maybe, depending on the child, a group four. Up in the front, I will have a lot more of my group fours and fronts and kind of sides, places that are easily accessible for me as the teacher because I'm going to be checking in on those students more. I wanna be able to get to them. So my group four students will be closer. Not all group fours at the same table. Do not create pods of lower students. That, no, that is not gonna help them be successful. So I would put with them 
especially I have tables of three, maybe a four and two threes, or a four, a three, and a two, okay? Trying to mix them together. I want them to feel comfortable talking and working with their group. I want all students to feel comfortable, but I want them to be able to push each other and help each other, okay? So when I'm looking at that reading, don't create just those low, low pods. That's not gonna help them be successful. So where do I go from here? Our seating chart is not etched in stone. It is not permanent. I move my seating chart anywhere from every three to four weeks. That first few weeks, as students are mingling and working with each other, because like I said, we get up and move and we do different things, is I take note and I write it on that seating chart. Who is really working well with each other? Who really pushes another person specifically to do more and be better? I write that stuff down because in three to four weeks, I am moving my seating chart again. I've gotten to know the students. I've gotten to see the areas where they are successful. In those first three weeks, first four weeks, let the students move. Have an activity where they get to get up and choose where they go and sit. So you can kind of see, okay, here's what's going on. Here's the dynamics. Have an activity where you've now changed your seating. Maybe you've put them into row seating where the desks are all connected and they're working with six people instead of three or four. How do they work together? Really look at that and take notes on it. How are you going to seat them? When I change my seating, it's usually after a test that we've taken, a common assessment, and now I'm looking at what are the kids gonna need help in standard-wise, especially in our next unit, if standards transfer over, where I'm gonna need to go help them. What can I easily access? Because I work middle school. If you work middle school and high school, those kids are big and our classrooms are and so sometimes it is hard for me to walk around the room and so I need to have them at a table that I can easily go to and it's not obvious that I'm coming to help you because we never want to make students feel like that so be flexible don't be afraid to change it but always 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 have that first day seating chart hope it helps